As you probably know, the sun emits a wide spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. At one end of the electromagnetic spectrum are very high energy gamma rays, X-rays, and ultraviolet waves. On the other end are longer wavelength, lower energy, infrared, micro, and radio waves. Visible light lies between these two ends of the electromagnetic spectrum and contains the wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation most useful to living organisms. What looks like white light reaching us from the sun is actually made up of many different colors corresponding to many different wavelengths. Visible light waves extend from the ultraviolet and blue range on one end into green, yellow, and red up to the edge of the infrared range on the other. Light striking a leaf can be reflected, transmitted through the leaf, or absorbed by it. The light reflected or transmitted by a leaf produces its color, while light that is absorbed heats up the leaf or drives biological processes like photosynthesis. In biochemical terms, pigments are any natural substance that occur in and color the tissues of an organism. Since chlorophyll, the key light-capturing molecule in photosynthetic membranes, is largely responsible for the green color of most plants, it is often referred to as a pigment. Other molecules, such as carotenoids and phycocyanins, are also often present in photosynthetic membranes, capturing light energy and transferring it to chlorophyll molecules. Carotenoids and phycocyanins are referred to as accessory pigments. Each pigment, or accessory pigment, absorbs and reflects different wavelengths of light. Chlorophyll absorbs violet, blue, and red light, but reflects green light, thereby giving leaves their green color. Carotenoids absorb blue and green light and reflect yellow and red, while phycocyanins absorb green and yellow and reflect blue or purple. During fall, it is the color of the carotenoids and phycocyanins made visible by the disappearance of chlorophyll that gives leaves their dramatic yellow, orange, red, and purple colors. As all wavelengths of light are absorbed to some degree by either chlorophyll, carotenoids, or phycocyanins, all wavelengths of light can drive photosynthesis to some extent. But the peak wavelengths lie in the blue and red regions of the visible light spectrum. Let's now look at the cellular structures, photosystems one and two, that begin the process of converting light captured by pigments into chemical energy.